And we're back. Hello. <laughs> Welcome hey, back guys. to part two. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to part two of episode oh, nine, uh, or the stream part two, if you've joined us. We've uh, just finished our little five minute pee break. Um, now we are jumping straight back into the action. So the group have just managed to bring these eggs up onto the surface, uh, uh, up onto the surface, up onto the top of this plateau area, um, the cliffside where they were originally located down in the, the caverns inside the hatchery. And they've come up with an elaborate plan. Now, can you guys talk me through? Now that you've had a bit of a chance to think about it, what exactly would you like to do? So I know that you've talked about a chest, making some sort of sled, um, having Emmerich carry one of the eggs. Talk me through, what's the plan? I think we're going to place two eggs in a chest, which then Mira's yeah. going to shape water continuously under it to keep moving it over the ground while Leo, Sin, and Azur attend to it and push it. Then okay. Emmerich Sounds is going to have Wiltix help him put the egg on his back, use ropes and stuff like that to prop it in place. And then Will Tix will assist Emmerich in transporting said egg. I like it. So, um, who's going back to get the chest? Uh, um, I'll go get it. Well, maybe here. probably probably a zoo <laughs> in the it's just, I imagine. it's just literally in the previous room. Uh, no, well, why don't we carry the uh, uh, why don't we carry the eggs out for that room so they're at least out of the uh, range of said. Um, well, give it a go. It shouldn't be that hard getting up the stairs, actually, if there's like two people helping. I mean, we could just do it one egg at a time and take, like, give it, if that's the if that's the worry. Yeah, I reckon we should do that. Just one egg mm. at, at a time, just over this. There's probably like maybe 10, 15, probably 15, of, um, 15 feet of stairs. So just nice and slow and easy, and everyone helping out should be fine. Do we have, do I have a, um, I'll help by taking out my um, my blanket that I use for sleeping, and I'll put the blanket mm -hmm. on the stairs, and then you can pull the egg up the stairs, the blanket, if you like. Well, there you go. We'll do that. Alrighty. So, um, so you've gotten the chest from the previous room, the the large chest that was holding a number of items in front of the altar. You've brought it down here. Now you've already disabled the trap inside this chest. Um, so the the, you bring the chest down here. Did you want to put anything inside the chest or just the eggs? Maybe put the blanket uh, in there then. Yeah, just something to cushion the, the eggs as they're inside, I suppose. That's what I reckon All we right. do then, if we can do yeah, that. Yeah, so you can, it, one of you can wrap your bedroll, or even two or three of you can wrap your bedrolls in and around the chest. You then place the eggs very, very carefully inside. Um, so you've got two of them inside a chest. So I'll just group these two together. And then you've got one egg that Emmerich is carrying with. Uh, Wiltix's help, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll also I'll also use my bedroll to actually cover it. So I'll like wrap it around my egg, my the the roll wrapped around the egg. Yeah, the bedroll wrapped around the egg, and then the ropes tied in place, not too Perfect. tight. Um, and then I'll prop it up on my back, like almost like just a backpack, I guess, with Wiltix nice. being at the back, holding it in place, and sort of propping it up and making sure that it doesn't move around too much. Yeah. Alrighty, and then Azua and Leosin are going to help Mira with this chest. So Mira's going to be in front focusing on the um, the spell casting, and Azua and Leosin are going to push together uh, the chest on the ice. Is that the plan? That's the plan. Fantastic. You don't need to make any rolls. That's a really, really good plan. Uh, cool. <laughs> fantastic. As you guys get it up the steps, uh, you're back in the main chamber where you were before, where you fought the Berserkers and where you convinced Langdedrosa to walk away. Um, what's over here? I'm going to take that's another pathway. Yeah, so it's a pathway um, heading up towards it's a series of uh, stone steps, very shallow stone steps leading up um, a little bit higher up in the caverns. Uh, look, none of us ever came up that way. Uh, maybe one of you guys should go and check the traps and stuff like that. That might be a bit of a quicker way to get the eggs out than uh, through down here. Yeah, rather than going back up the, the ladder. Yeah, look, that might be a bit of a... That might be a little bit hard. Yeah, I just got ahead. Leosin, you look pretty healthy. Would you like to go and have a Make sure there's no traps? Uh, yes, help. I can, I'll I can help. absolutely... I'll, I'll come with you. Okay. Zuri, just okay, be fantastic. a little careful of traps. You're, you're looking pretty worse for wear. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll go, guys. You, Simon, you have one yes, HP, and... but just be careful. Yeah. No, I have Yosin seven now. Yosin goes into stealth. Oh, okay. okay, you have seven now. Oh, no, Simon. Sorry, no, Wiltix is fine. 
Andrew, I, I have my HP. Yeah, yes. you can be a little careful because <laughs> I know that you're very bloodied up at the moment. You look like beaten up. You got bruised. You have blood <laughs> everywhere. You're bleeding out of a bunch of different orifices. You're not looking crash hot. Which orifices is he bleeding? Out? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll um, leave that to so, the imagination. So mind. this pathway, it does look a little bit weird on the map, but that's because this pathway is traveling underneath a pathway above. Um, but you can see that the pathway carries on towards the north. This very dark, narrow corridor that looks very hard to traverse. Um, yeah, and the stairs uh. leading all the way up. This is this is going to be a bit of an arduous journey heading up back this way. It might actually be easier going this way then. Yeah, up I think so. I'm sure uh, we could I'll figure out. A, can I send the dancing lights like as sort? far as they go? Yeah, 120 feet for dancing lights. Yeah. Not that I can see. I'll follow them, like, halfway. No, yeah, then you can see this. Here. It opens yeah. up into a, a cavern straight ahead of you. Um, you oh, can I'll see pe- that I'll that pe- cavern pe- has pe- a pathway. Around. Yeah, I'll yeah. just peek around. Oh my god, there's a lot of the map, actually, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I'm just getting a feel for it, actually. Oh, wow. So you can see two pathways, one way. heading towards the <laughs> northeast, one heading towards the northwest. The northwest pathway has a number of stairs. I don't think it's smart to keep going that way. Yeah, we don't know what we'll come across. It could be enemies up there, and there's no one to help you right now, except maybe Leo. Mira, can you make me a perception check? <laughs> oh. Seven. <laughs> um, it's all clear. You see... Uh, looking around the corner, old Kobold peeks his head out, looking up towards the pathway to the northwest, doesn't seem to spot you somehow, and move back in <laughs> and away. <laughs> I, rolled, I rolled garbage perception. Let's not go that way. I think Kobold. Uh, Mira will duck back and then go back to the others quietly. I'll stealth yeah. back. I'll stealth. Leosin's sort of here with you and he goes, Wait, what did you see? You, you can keep your same stealth from before, Mira. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, you guys arrive back. Oh, Cobalt. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> you uh, guys get back to the main group, walking quietly. How we are? How we looking there? We looking good? No go. Uh, this goes on forever, doesn't it? It's a big old cavern. Ah. Uh, well, look. Maybe we could uh, use a bunch of bed sheets and use some ropes and we can maybe uh, create like a little pulley system that we can actually move that uh the eggs up the ladder there what do you reckon they again what is the reason that we're taking these should we not just destroy them well Well, uh, I, i suppose we can have that conversation here but do you not think it's worth taking them with us 100 percent I reckon we take them with us. I reckon there's a lot of good that could come out of these eggs. Man, I don't know what good could come out of them, but... Like a man. I I will say, as I've said before, you you guys would know, Mira's already told you this, you know that Chromatic Dragonborn, unlike in um, standard Faerunian D&D, which is is sort of the main story of D&D, in Nostea, they're not automatically evil, Chromatic Dragons. Um, It's just that Chromatic Dragons... If for the most part were the ones that Tiamat focused her attentions on the most and they were the ones that for the most part like more of them joined her than the metallics but they're not they're not born evil nothing nothing on Nostea is born evil oh, well, actually oh, that's oh. not true there's a few things that are born evil but yeah. chromatic dragons aren't one of them <laughs> I remember you saying that like you're trying to make it a little bit different a little like, bit they, more interesting you said they tilt more to evil but like yeah. they can definitely tilt the other way I look yeah, at everyone they're, they're... and I I actually go, yeah, this uh, this one on my back could definitely be a little uh, companion for me. What do you reckon? That'd be pretty fun. Would love to ride a dragon. Exactly. That's what I want to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, dragons yeah, take a couple of days to grow up. Everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Well, I'm only three and a half feet tall, so... <laughs> it won't take long. No. That is a good point, actually. Hmm. So oh. Emmerich's very intent on actually keeping the one on the uh, bat on his back as a potential mount for later on. <laughs> he wants you to attempt him it. later on. You swap, huh? You you carry him for now, and later he'll carry you. Potentially, yeah. Oh, love it. All right. Well, uh, are we gonna head back <laughs> up the way we came then. 
Oh, it depends on how Mira reacts to all this. Yeah, I mean, Mira, what do you think we should... Uh, surely that, you know, if we could raise them good. They don't think they're going to come out evil if we don't not raise them evil. Uh, not everything is evil when it begins life. Don't you see people, uh, assholes, who, like, raise their like, dogs in a certain way? And the dog turns out bad, that's because the asshole raising them was an asshole. Again, you're underestimating dragons. They are not beasts. They are not something that you can just ride. They will. I said companion. I didn't say mount. I said companion. We'll be friends. Best of friends. Isn't that right, little one? I pat the egg on the back. (laughs) The egg reply. No. (laughs) No. Well, I suppose everyone needs a second chance. What, do you think we should destroy them? Well, I just wonder. They look like they're normal dragons, but I don't know what ends or purposes this cult had for them. And I look back over at the effigy, the the shrine on the side there. Yes, it's a five-headed statue of Tiamat. With the black dragon at the front. Um, Well, when you say all this, I'll I'll look at you and I'll say, Well, look. I can see you're a little bit, uh, you're a little bit, you got a bit of trepidation here. Why don't we get someone who can maybe, uh, have a look at them and see if they're cursed or they've been changed by magic. And then we can make our decision. So we take them back to, uh, Greenland? Civilization. I see. Okay. Back to our cart. Okay. <laughs> this sounds like a great idea. Do you know how much how much dragons eat? Do you, I don't think we have the funds for this. I don't think a, that we have to get a cult. We'll have to make a uh, what? Uh, a cult worth? <laughs> they eat. Them. <laughs> oh, that's so. <laughs> well, look. I, I, it's just a lot of responsibility. I just I don't know if we're organised enough for this, but okay. oh, you've got a you've got a good brain in your shoulders there. She really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's charisma and intelligence. I okay. You're very uh you're very organised. Well, there's lots to organise now. I mean, how are we going to get this up this chute, the pulley system? Um, uh, uh, what have I got? What have we got? Well, I imagine everyone's got rope on them. Yep. I think yeah. so. Yeah, most of you would, if you've taken the explorers or the adventurers um, packs as your starting equipment, you will have. I think it's fifty foot of rope. Yeah, mm. and I also mm. I actually bought a few. You uh, did. I've got that list here. Yeah. Stuff like that. So I've actually got a few pittons and stuff. We can place. We can put in place. Mm. To actually, create a bit of a system. So you, you buying all that stuff was one of the reasons I gave you that extra pouch on your uh, <laughs> on your character art because okay. I was like, well, he's carrying a lot of shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well, uh, we can always, you know, take one egg up at a time, wrapping it in the uh, the rug we had to move to get them up, uh, to get down here. Slowly uh, winch them up. Yep. Just make one caveat. Could I freeze the eggs? That is a make great them. idea. Well, would that kill them? No, it won't. It'll just inactivate them. That is a fantastic idea. Do you actually know that, though? I think I do from... Like, do you actually know that? Previous... Like, Mira, your previous role, Mira, you know my for a fact role. that taking them out of the humid, humid warm chamber, you think you've already started that process. Um, it okay. needs to be It needs to be about 30 to 35 degrees Celsius um, and at least like 60 to 70% humidity for these things to start um, incubating properly. So if she did freeze them, what would actually happen? Would it just pause them in time? So to, to freeze the egg itself, you, you'd have to use some sort of like snowlock snowball swarm style thing, which is going to break the eggs. If you wanted to freeze water around them to cool them rapidly, um, I'd roll a percentile dice to see if it cracks the surface as the water expands. Well, what if what if rather than what if rather than freezing the eggs, if we freeze a layer around the um, the treasure box yeah. internally, like a like yeah. a freezer? Rich. So yeah. if you if you coated the inside of the water with uh, um, inside of the box with water, box. froze uh-huh. it, and then placed the eggs in there. Um, you think that'd speed up the process of cooling them down? Absolutely. 
Yeah, I'll do but that. We keep them still. Well, if you wanted to even wet the, the bedrolls. Uh, yeah, well, we still keep them in the bedrolls. That way yeah. they aren't directly touching the frozen yep. layer. Cool, cool, and cool. then, uh, yeah, cool the eggs down. I like maybe it a lot. If, maybe if we rotate the eggs through the, uh, through the box, that way it keeps the temperature down. Maybe. So, uh, sounds like a good plan to me. I, I really like it. That's fantastic. And then, what, and then when we f get back to a safe spot, we can in like do like some spells to make humidity and heat again. I can do many, well both of those things very easily. I am pretty much the perfect. Mira is pretty much the perfect egg sort of brood. Uh, brood mother Mira. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, look, can yeah. heat it up and cool it down and keep the perfect temperature. How do you know so much about this stuff? Do you have any prior experience? In dragons? Yes. Oh, well, that's definitely... <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's an answer. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll that's me, that's Emmerich. Pretty direct. I don't know if you've noticed. I have a dragon, Emmerich. I have a dragon, Emmerich. <laughs> Open your no, eyes, no, no, you no. little shit. I realize that you're a dragon, but have you ever actually lay, like, raised big dragon three-foot eggs? It's up to you, Mira. No, Given not your background, it's up to you. No. Not to All right. Well, look, I'll have to place my faith in you. Got to look after a little uh, old buddy over here. Pointing to the egg on my back. I the was... Emmerich has grown a little attached to now. I was advised that I would make a very good um, brood. Uh, well, well, look, it seems like we better get a bit of a move on. Need to get these guys uh, into the cart, and then start getting a bit of uh, humidity and heat into them. What do you reckon? We should uh, skamoose. Skamoose. <laughs> <laughs> Pitter patter. Let's get at it. Come on. <laughs> on your bike. On your horse. Yeah, no bike. On your horse. On your horse. Cart. Yeah. We have to get up the chute first. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, case, let's start getting that into effect now. <laughs> oh, I have another Alrighty. idea. I have another idea. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, so this rug up here. Yes. That could be like a bigger blanket. Yes, it could, it be. could be. It could be yeah. handy, yes. We could just... Um, you could cut it to size. Well, if two people like stood at the top and two people stood at the bottom, we could almost make like a little um, egg lift. With the, the... If, you, if you combined... I think at least two of you have ropes minimum. If you combine yeah. the two 50-foot ropes, you bunch up the carpet and tie it yeah. off you could and then all of you could climb up one of you with the rope and then all of you together could try and lift this up you think you could easily easily get these uh, get these up the egg on emmerich's back is going to be a little bit a little bit trickier um emmerich is going to have to make an athletics check to climb the rope with the egg on his what back. if what if we oh. made like a pulley system where yeah. um like a reverse pulley system where oh, don't get me wrong we, i'll probably we, take the egg off we tie yeah. the eggs we tie the eggs up and then we'd loop it back over one of us uh hangs onto the rope and pulls down on back towards down to the lower levels and uh bring the egg what's up. going to be the pivot what's going to be the fulcrum what's going to be the pivot point of this yeah. rope though we could connect one of the uh one of um uh, we could make something and connect it into the ceiling above yeah if you, if you make something and i, have, and I, and I do above. have pythons uh, pythons you can hit them into place with hammers it's very true that's why i bought them i make like a real pulley system all right, let's welcome go. to the uh, welcome to the Lost Archives uh, egg retrieval service. <laughs> um, as we micromanage how to get eggs out of a hole. <laughs> I think that's hey, what the, the name of the episode is going to be. Okay? This, is, this is what it's all about. Episode nine is going to be titled "Egg Retrieval Service," and then the, the description is the t the team attempt to get three eggs out of a hole. <laughs> These are, right, I, love, I love my new, I love my new like episode titles where I'm just like just basically being a shit. <laughs> it's the best. Alrighty. So how are you guys gonna do this? So I'll move, I'll move you down here, yep. so that you're in position. What, what's your plan? Who's doing what? I'll put the eggs here. One, two, three. Well, well obviously, did you say that you're wrapping them all in the rug? Is that what we were doing? Even if like we do one at a time, like. Yeah, because, I mean, they're only 70 kilos, so if you have something at the top and, you know, one person's holding on one side of the rope and the eggs on the other side, I mean, two of you guys yeah. have to be more than if 70 you, kilos. If you take one of them out of the chest, that means that 
there's going to be 70 kilo weight, 70 kilo weight, and then the chest plus the egg is probably going to be about 85 kilos, which is much more manageable than having two eggs in the chest, which mm. is going to be 160 kilos worth of we just, weight to pull. Yeah, out. I reckon we do it one at a time so we don't really fail anything. Yeah. If we, try, so oh, if we try two or three of them, I think at one point, like one time, I think we'll have to start making a lot of checks. But this way, with everyone pitching in, I don't think we'll have to do many checks. Oh, won't you, Jared? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I said I don't think we'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> I've covered myself. Alrighty. So, who's who's doing what? Alright, so, uh, we, I'll go up, and I'll take the yep. pitting with me. Yep. Where do you need um, the, strongest, the strongest boy, because they have the most strength? Should I be up top pulling it up? How big's the opening, Owen, that, uh, where we uh, pop through? Like, is there enough room to fit one egg and one person at the same time? Like, through the, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it is. I believe it's five feet. Let me double check, because it is specifically labelled here. Because uh, no, all we need to do one. is counterweight. Like, if one person weighs more than the egg holding onto the other side of the rope, exactly. it will go but, up. And... Yeah, that's what, I, that, sorry, that's what I was trying to get at before. If we, yeah. Mm. Like an elevator roof. Yeah. So, um... Emmerich weighs 260 pounds. Drovers. So you weigh... Uh, oh, it's only a three foot... It's only a three foot wide hole, so it's pretty narrow. Um, but you can get the eggs up. So Emmerich's 115... 117 kilos of muscle. So I'm gonna... So what if I take two pittons and fix them into the ceiling? We'll pass mm -hmm. the rope through them. Mm -hmm. And then if you guys fix the egg... Yeah. If you guys tie up the egg one at a time... Um, and then we'll all, if you all pull the other rope as a counterweight and pull the egg up, and then I'll shift it over, take it off up here, and then we'll repeat the process. So you chuck the carpet down the hole, you bundle up the carpet, throw it down the hole. Yep. Um, first egg is placed inside the carpet. You tie your ropes around the carpet to hold the egg securely. Um, can I get you to make me a athletics or an acrobatics check, Azua? Actually, I guess it'd be athletics, acrobatics, or sleight of hand to um, position these pitons, I would say. Oh, okay. Yeah, position pitons. Yeah. 23. Wow. 23 is good. Nice. Um, I'll just reveal more of this so you guys can see where you're... Oh, that's the wrong one. Let me try that again. There you go. No, I've done it worse. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Black How about on this? There we go. Yeah, the darkness spreads. Um as you anger the dungeon master with your sneaky plans. There you go. <laughs> with our physics. <laughs> with, yeah, I know. <laughs> Lucky Ten. I did physics. Um, so, with a 23, who is pulling on the rope? Well, do we need the strongest person to pull? Or? I think so. Well, what if, all, what if all four of you just pulled? Make I mean, it nice like, and easy. What about you have Leotin go up there with you just to like help you, and then we'll have me, Mira, and Wiltix down here. Or maybe Will Tick's up. Or Will Tick's come up. Or do you want me to climb the ladder behind the egg just to make sure it's not swaying too much? Well, look, you can do that and you can hold, you can sort of prop it in place as it gets pulled up. Yeah, I'm the smallest one, so I might as well just climb the, the ladder and behind can just And then you can just go and follow it up. Yeah. And then I'll be the main counterbalance, pulling, like, holding the rope, but then Leo, Sin, and Mira can help me. Hmm. Very, very nice work. Um, I'm not even going to make you roll uh, that plan physics wise makes perfect sense and given that you got such a high roll for the pitons uh, azure they're not coming free anytime soon you successfully move all three eggs up on top and then um i guess we'll then just go back into what we had set up before with the you know the chest yeah. and yeah um my back yeah continue with the same but yeah. i broke yeah perfect. don't fix it yeah i'll put you guys up so, here um there is a little ledge here owen so we might it's only a five foot, five foot lip. Yeah, if you're, like we'll probably we'll just be very careful. We we'll go and help each other out with it and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I, you guys pass back through this corridor here um, as you head towards the west, passing through the narrow corridor where you fought the cultists who had set up a little barracks and a little sleeping den. Oh my den. god! Thank God we moved all their bodies. In a as way. you pass through the narrow corridor here, you can have a quick glance towards your left as you see the hallway and the chambers where you piled up the bodies of oh, two, man. four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen people. He's going to love 14, it. Fourteen, fourteen people. Uh, as you get to the lip, uh, you very, very carefully pass over the edge, making sure to keep the eggs very safe and secure. And 
you have no problems getting them back towards the mouth of the All cave. Right. Now that we're in I here, would you guys like to do that freezing technique? I, yeah, I suppose I was. You didn't think there was a need. I mean, before I before we moved, I was gonna suggest we do that in here and yeah, potentially I, go and search out the rest of this. Uh, because like the only thing area. I think about now is we're gonna transport these over like a bit of country. Well, we have our cart hidden, don't we? Well, I don't know if we ever drove our cart. You down don't. Here. You don't have your cart here. Um, Maybe other you guys left that back in Green Nest. Mm, I'm sure we could find a cart. Oh we no! Sorry, no, no, no. You camp. didn't. You didn't leave it back in Green Nest. You, you, um, you dropped it off before the camp. So as long as you can make it back to the rear guard camp, your cart's not too far from there because you stopped it off in an area of woodland, um, just before the rear guard because the area became quite rocky and and mountainous. Yeah. All right. So cool. it's only it's only a couple of hours to the rear guard. I think it was sort of half an hour running so that'd be about an hour and a half walking at a slow pace so um i guess we'll go to the to the uh, cave entrance though and i'll just sort of mutter to azura or leos and uh could you one of you guys just check outside and see if there's any uh, friendlies or maybe not friendlies outside what were you saying azura about exploring the cave yeah oh yeah sorry uh, okay sorry i we'll was go gonna backwards. suggest i was gonna suggest that sorry owen i know you just moved us all in here but I was no, going to no, suggest no, before fine. we uh, continue on, maybe we should store the eggs in here and then have a look through the rest of the cave system quickly oh. just to oh. see whether there's any further eggs. Well, I don't, I don't know if we do that right now. We've already been told there's another cobalt in there and uh, I think you, between we you and I, know. we have eight hit points. <laughs> look, we can always come back. Like, It's not out of the realm of possibility to come back to this cave and check that the other part out. But I think we need to get these eggs out and get you guys out because you've got no hit points. Plus, we can't really carry much more. Like we've um, no. two eggs per person. It's That's like quite literally quite like funny. it's like three eggs with the chest, uh, three people with one chest of two, and then two people for one. So I think we can always uh, come back. And I, I'm just I know I'm just worried that uh, you know that that statue of Tiamat had was it five heads? We found three eggs. I'm just we assuming that there is broken. another. Do you remember that two nests were abandoned? Yeah. Very nicely remembered, guys. Mm. Mm. Good point. There was also well, those weapons, those uh, relics, they might still be down here. I mean, mm. we'd have so, to come back after a short rest. Is our, I mean, is our plan to, to rest? go back up and rest in the tents that are, or the, the space, you know, the, the old cultist camp and then come back? I mean, well, look, we could... I stay here. I mean, like, if we can keep these three, you know, cool and in, in, basically just sort of keep them in a stasis until we can revive them again with all the heat and stuff, but then we'll need to get you guys HP because if we're going to press on to these with this cold balls and stuff, we need, we need you guys need a bit of HP. So, so we'd have to do a rest of some type. And we don't so know if more cultists are coming back for the eggs as well. I mean, it could be drag the, the big dragon that came to uh, mm. just some and, stuff before. Good point. Okay, out of this. We can always come back. Exactly. And I think yeah, eggs, right. I think the weapons and stuff and relics are like, really good and stuff, but like three dragon eggs? Yeah. Like that's going to be something the cultists are really going to miss. Plus all the gold we found in jewels and. Oh, there was like almost a thousand gold in jewels. Wasn't there was there? more than that. Not more. Do you, yeah. do you yeah. guys, does someone want to make me an intelligence check? Nope. Uh, yeah, uh, I can. <laughs> Well, you're the one that actually, you're the one that looked at the chest. You and especially Mira, seeing as you just so brought up, you just mentioned the gold of Viltex. That does make sense. Um, you reckon that a lot of that stuff is probably stolen from Green Nest from the treasury. Ah. Um, now that you think about it, and you've had a bit of a chance to sort of think it over and have a look at it, um, the patterning uh, matches one of the uh, family crests that you happen to glance at on your way into Green Nest. One of the knights was wearing a family crest. Um, this group of three lilies bound by a single red sash and the necklace uh, has that same symbol on it. It looks like a family crest and you think, ah, uh, yep. So that we would probably, make sense. We probably couldn't even pebble it off because the people uh, would be like, this is a holy, like, this is a uh, knight insignia. Oh, uh, look, if you if you take it away out of Green Nest, um, people might not recognize it you're not sure how how famous this particular emblem down. is and there's always there's always the thieves guild if you ever need to sell anything dodge the thieves guild are always <laughs> there um however if you tried to peddle this in green nest wiltix you suspect that people would be like 
Hang on a minute. That's from our town. <laughs> you, you, you stole that. Well, we, we were returning the, uh, the magical items to Green Nest, so, uh, I mean, gold is almost as good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you were told by Night Hill to recover anything stolen from the treasury, um, and if you could get back the weapon that belonged to Brother Jacob, Brother Jacob, um, you were encouraged to do so. But that was more Brother Jacob who was asking you to do that rather than Night Hill. He was mostly after the stuff stolen from the treasury. I mean, what would we have to do, guys? Would we have to have a short or long rest? Because uh, you've used all your hit dice, haven't you? Yeah. I, I'd need I'd need a long I'd need a long rest. So do I. I mean, like, can I mean, we really stay here for eight hours? It's the safest no. place to have rest. Oh, and we, can always, uh, we can always we can always come go back, back to the forest where we were, put the eggs in the cart, or hide them in the forest, and then uh, come back. I mean, it was only as Owen said, it only took us about hour to walk in here before so that was yeah that was moving at a brisk pace with these things it'll be closer to an hour and a half oh, sorry, I mean, when, a bit slower. When coming back after yeah yeah, yeah I, so I, they're yeah. all up two and a half hours to go there and drop the eggs off and come back hmm. i just worry that once we've uh once we've left and uh the cultists know that the eggs are gone then uh this might not be the most wonderful place to come back to well look you, you could be right but like when you really think about it, could you even survive the other tunnels? It's only really me and Mira and maybe Leosin that are pretty healthy at the moment. I, I, need, I definitely need a rest. But whether we do that down here, I mean, that's up to everybody, but... Happy, well, to, uh, happy to head back. As long as the eggs aren't too damaged, that's all I really care about. Look, the only other thing that uh, I might be uh, happy with is we're in a, a town that's semi-abandoned at the moment. If we uh, hide in one of the left-behind tents or cabins and rest there, but uh, at the same time, I don't know how uh, sneakily we can sneak out with these eggs if they come back as well. Well, like, we could try and pass ourselves off as cultists. We have robes and stuff still. Yeah, but I mean, the, we didn't have the same guard uniform as what the uh, guards were had on the door. To it's let true, them. but a lot of the people that were, you know, a phase of that stuff are dead. <laughs> <laughs> true, I'm just thinking if they come back, because uh, there were still guards here. And uh, there's only five of us. It's true. But look, we need. I think we need to do something. We need to make up our minds. I don't so, think in our current state we can go into the tunnels right now. So um, I think we definitely need to move out and at least rest before we come back. So up it is. So look, either way, I think we're going to leave. And uh, I, I prefer to leave with the dragon eggs. Yeah, yeah. Because well, dragon I, eggs might be better than any other treasure. I uh, I vote to go back to the forest then. We can hide them there somewhere. and uh, yeah, we, could uh, even, we could even heat them up and stuff like that and maybe leave the earth. Yeah. Or bury them, actually. Yeah, bury yeah, them. Yeah, bury them on, hit them on the ground. So. All right. Well, All right, anyway, so we'll we'll move yeah, out. So, Owen. Yeah. So we'll put Alrighty. them in the. We'll we'll open the treasure box and, uh, Mira, if you can ice the box, as it were. I mean, like her so. doing the ice flow underneath or whatever the water will probably cause a bit of like a temperature shift in the box itself. Mm, definitely. Creating definitely. a bit of an ice box. And then we can just sort so, of every now and again just switch them around. Yeah, that was the. Because uh... like it's not that hard to get the one off my back and put and change them around. So we'll, probably keep we keep like the... that. we'll keep them rotating. Keep that temperature really low, and uh, head on out. We'll just um just we'll fix maybe keep an eye out for anyone. We are not being the most stealthy. Oh, we'll be moving oh, uh... slowly <laughs> as well. I'll keep my ears pinned. Because, uh, like, you probably don't have to help too much with my back because I have, like, the ropes and stuff. Like, I'm not yeah, really holding it so much as the ropes are. But that, it's definitely good to have you helping me. But, like, you can keep an eye out too. Cool. Yeah. Easy. All right. Well, um, I'll keep my eyes and ears open to any noises or any uh, enemies that come along. Alrighty. And as you guys head out of the cave, I'm going to bring you back to the main screen. We'll do this next little bit. In the theater of the mind. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Let's get that lined up nicely. Is Fantastic. there actually... What is left in the camp, Owen? Is there any, so, like, yeah, I'll, or anything? Um, 
I'll read out the description of what you see back from when you guys entered the camp the first time. So yeah, you find that it's been mostly abandoned. Um, a number of huts have been burnt down uh, by your actions the night before. <laughs> the area that was set up belonging to uh, the mercenaries has been very well packed up. There is nothing left at all there. It looks like the mercenaries are really used to grabbing all their stuff and leaving and, and setting up camp really quickly, packing it up really quickly. Um, there are, the guard towers are still there. There are a couple of tents still around and you know that there are a group of hunters. Um, just four, four hunters just oh, yeah. chilling around the campfire that you spoke to on the way in. They weren't particularly interested in chatting to you, but they were sort of just eating food. Um, and they, I believe they told you that they were catching food to deliver to the cave. Um, but they weren't, they didn't seem to be members of the cult, or if they were, they really didn't give a shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and the prisoner areas have all been packed up and taken away. So there's, there's a handful of tents, maybe four or five tents left, and then the guard towers. Okay, so we'll uh, and just... there's a there's a hut that the um, hunters were using. Okay. Um. Well, I don't really think there's much to do then, other than maybe just truck along then. Yeah, Let's we head back else. to where we camped. What if we head back to where we camped the night before? And then, or do you want to head all the way back to the? So your your cart, cart. isn't too far from that spot. That camp yeah, we'll have to go, go back there. to the cart. Yeah. And then, and then we can like bury them in the ground, like, and maybe have some like coals going underneath them or something, just to like make it a lot more to the temperature they need. And then we can leave them there for now and um, leave the cart hidden. And then we can check the cave maybe after a long rest or so, or maybe we could just transport them back on the cart and go to to another town or something. Are we not going back in to try and get the Really? That's what I mean. Like we can do two things. We can we can go back, put them in the ground, let them simmer, and like let them just stay at the temperature they need. We can get our long rest, and then we can go back, or we can put them on the cart and go to a town. Yeah, there's two options, I think. I don't That's... think we should be taking these into any civilized place as long as we can. Well, we don't well, need to freak out a bit. We don't need to take them into the town. Maybe we can leave the cart on the outskirts while we go into town and leave a guard. If we do that, hmm. oh look! I think the the, the closest town was a few hours away. <clears throat> I think we're uh, there'll be greenness between yeah, yeah between the long rest and then the trip to get there and back to go back in the cave. A lot of things might have changed. So uh, maybe so we, we just camp. So, right we camp we, yeah, so we camp where we yeah. So we camp where we where we camped yesterday or last night, yep. and have broad brood mother Mira look after the eggs. Brood mirror, <laughs> brood mother, and then we can go well, back to the caves up the long rest. Yeah, that's yep. a good plan. Perfect. All right. Okay, so as you guys head out of the cave entrance and see the side of the camp in ruins, you can see that two of the hunters have now left. Um, there's only two remaining: one gnome and one half elf, uh, who's half dark elf, uh, female uh, half elf, male gnome, and they are sitting around the camp roasting a deer rotisserie style um, the gnome appears to be carving the bones into arrowheads while the half elf slowly turns the turns the spit um, and as you approach you get curious looks given that you are currently um, creating and shaping water into ice and to make a to make a track <laughs> as you move along uh, but they don't say anything as they see you guys approach well, we, we identified ourselves as members of the cult, didn't we? Uh, you did. So the gnome is new. You haven't seen the gnome before, but the half-elf, you you did identify yourselves as members of the cult, and they were didn't seem too bothered. Well, um, they give you curious looks, but that's it. They don't say anything as you approach. What was that? Sorry, Claire? Oh, that, was the ghost, that was the ghost of the machine, I think. Oh, creepy. Ooh. Uh, yeah. So, did you guys want to converse with them at all, or are you happy to just move on past not saying anything? Well, just nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I'll just sort of, I'll just sort of nod my head at them and be like, you know, just say it's cult business. <laughs> they, the gnome, just sort of shakes his head and goes, "Yeah, I'll, I'll bet it is." It doesn't say anything more than that. The half elf completely ignores you. And keeps turning the rotisserie. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave him be. Cool. 
you guys have passed them. Um, is anyone keeping watch? I believe Biltix, you said you were going to yes. keep it of watch. Would you like to roll me a perception check? Sure can. And I'd be listening out as well. So who... Uh... 18, yeah. You have advantage if you're using your hearing. Yeah. Seven. We'll take the 18, I think. Yeah, take the 18 <laughs> um, then. So yeah, Wiltix, as you every so often as you're helping Emrick, you just run out the front, sort of sniff the air, close your eyes and listen, seeing if you can hear anything on the wind, um, any vibrations through the earth, but you don't catch any any sounds of anything. Uh, you guys spend the next hour and a half walking towards the campsite. Um, Mira and Emrick, I'm going to need you both to make me constitution saving throws. Mira, because you're casting a cantrip repeatedly every few seconds. Emric, because you're carrying this heavy egg. However, Emric, you have advantage because of the help you're receiving from Wiltix. And the ropes, I guess. And the ropes. Ah, right, I'll, I'll do it. All right, 18. Oh. Yep. 21. 21. You guys are both fine. You don't take a point of exhaustion. You just keep on keeping on. <laughs> um, Perfect. Yeah, nicely done. You continue along for an hour and a half before pushing out through the area of woodland where you had previously passed through. You can see the small area that you'd set up as a campsite off towards the left and the rise, uh, the two pathways, that, sorry, the pathway that led beneath the two uh, hillsides cut through the rock where the rear guard had previously been stationed is, uh, is above you. You know your cart is on the other side of this rise here, uh, but your previous campsite where you had spent the night sharing stories and where Wiltix had had his dream seems undisturbed uh, from when you'd left it. All right, so I imagine we'll go to that camp again, mm-hmm. and yeah. then we'll we'll put the eggs underground, like we were talking about, with coals and stuff like that to keep them at a good temperature. Yeah, we... so you're going to dig a dig a pit, put the eggs in, and then put some heat around them, correct? Yeah, but not like to cook them or anything. No, that's that's all good. Um, Mira I mean, would like, know that dragon eggs are else... pretty. Yeah, go well, let's see what else. Any other ideas? Yeah. Do we have to heat them? Like, I thought they, they just stay in a bit of a stasis and uh, don't really progress if we don't heat well, them. I mean, like, now that we can, like, keep them at a good temperature, because we can probably do the same thing similar on the cart with Mira. So we can probably keep them at a good temperature now. We don't. I don't know how long we want to keep them, like, frozen. We don't like want to activate them. I know, it's <laughs> up to you guys. It's up to you guys what you want to do. I, I mean, we don't know how long it is till they hatch. Do a week. We? A week. So we know that it is a week? We know that, yeah. You you I think it could be fine. anywhere between a um, couple of days to one and a half to two weeks. Okay. I'm just thinking that uh, I don't want eggs hatching on us on a trip back to, uh, <laughs> to Green Rest, that's all. So if it is only a couple of days... That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. So, Maybe we uh, should keep them in the uh, icebox for the moment. Well, I mean, we can just not heat them and put them underground. They'll just sit and uh, not really do anything. Stay in stasis, I suppose. All right. So you guys put them in a hole. You do not heat the hole by putting coals in, and then you bury um, the eggs in in the site where you previously had your campsite. Mm-hmm. Okay, absolutely. What would you guys like to do next? Uh, I'm, I'm going to have a very long rest. <laughs> yeah. You may all take a long rest, and you benefit from a level up. Oh, hell yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> As you are now level five. Four. Four. Well, four. Know. four. <laughs> yeah, five. You, you're level four. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, you're not level five. five. Shut up. Oh, Damn I'm it. Level five. Yeah, you're level five. Yeah. Ignore me. <laughs> I know I know what you guys are up to. That's the other game oh, that, that we're gonna be level five in the other one. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm I'm running two sorry, for those of you who are confused by the fact that I got them mixed up, I'm running two D D campaigns, one after the other. So one's tonight, one's tomorrow night. So yeah, you guys are about to level up level five next one, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Level four. I would have felt bad if we had just said yeah, yeah we're level five. We could do it right. Uh, I but I can also like I've literally got your characters open. I can see that you guys are level three. I just yeah, said the wrong thing. <laughs> Um, all good, cool, cool, all, cool. All good, all good. Uh, I'm actually going to level up Leosin too. I think he's deserving of a Hell level. Yeah. Up. Wow. So I'll level him up. Uh, yeah, fantastic. You guys can go ahead and uh, level up. Do you want to one by one? Do you want to quickly talk through uh, what options you're taking for this level four? Whether you're taking a feat, whether you're taking a um, ability score improvement. Uh, let me know what what are you doing. Let's 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 include the audience. How are you guys gonna gonna do this? Right, who wants to go first? 
Yeah. I think you do, Jared. No, Jared. Uh, I already know what I'm doing, so... Awesome, um, what are you doing? <laughs> so, after many bouts of combat and swinging his pole arm around, uh, uh, um, Emberick's going to sort of... Now that we've set up the camp and done the eggs, he's going to sort of lay back against a tree with his eyes, and he's going to start reminiscing about those combats. Um, and he's going to start... He's going to actually start thinking about like just the ranges he's been hitting things at and what you know he's actually thinking a bit of more on a mathematics side of things right now which is very rare for uh, Emmerich and he's going to pick up the feat Sentinel mm. um, so he's going to be- start being able to sort of gouge um, you know distances from people and what he in certain methods he could use to force them to you know and to force them to stop in their tracks um, Very nice. While keeping them their attention on him, I guess. So what you're going to do is make my life a nightmare. Potentially, look, Paul on cool. Central is going to be fun <laughs> for you. It is a lot of fun. It's going to be fun for me for, though. It is going to be a lot of fun for you, not so much fun for me. Um, <laughs> does anyone else know what they're doing? Uh, I, as I uh, am going into a trance-like state, I, uh, I start meditating and. If you have a high enough perception, you can just see the glimmers of this some golden wings sprout behind me. Oh! And I uh, I slowly lift off the ground, and oh. light dances around me as I focus, and I increase my wisdom and my dex. Very nice. Uh, I'll let you know what Leosin's doing. Leosin is taking a level in rogue. Um, oh, okay. And he's going to be yeah. Hello. Leosin's improving. Leosin's improving his stealth, um, and he's taking expertise in stealth, and he's also taking expertise in acrobatics as well. As Leosin uh, is going to start moving towards more of a spy. Um, cool. He's taking. He's just going to follow the uh, way of the astral self monk, and then the spy rogue. I I, I feel Very like cool. it's sort of him because he was doing all that stuff before he found him, like trying to f- discover exactly. information and intel. So yeah. So Leosin and uh, Azua, Azua's sort of the fist, Leosin's sort of the open <laughs> hand. <laughs> He's the shadow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he is, I mean, in a way. Um, Mira, have you decided what you're doing? I'm thinking either. So Mira has done a lot of introspection and talking and thinking. So I think she's either going to take... Uh, either more charisma or what do you guys think I think of taking inspiring leader feet I love that feat yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything about the feat I mean look well, honestly like hit, hit points I'm you know just go with what in, you feel yeah good. I think yeah. I'll do that because so you know she's yeah. thinking about their relationship with Lang Drosa and you know she was always kind of in his shadow and trying to avoid his path but now she has the confidence uh, to kind of make her own way and, and try and, you know, help help the friends that she's found. Yeah. So Honestly, this is like... going to be um, 10 minutes. So, if, so 10, 10 minutes to inspire your contaminants and then you can choose six friendly creatures to get uh, temporary hit points equal to your level plus charisma modifier. And we seem to be a bit low on the old hit points. Uh, <laughs> so I think that well, might be I think, quite um, useful. <laughs> I think that makes that makes a lot of sense given Mira's yeah. background in politics, and it makes a lot of sense given um, Mira's guild role, which is the the numerator, which is all about sort of analysing. So maybe as a leader, it's more you can less sort of be about like, oh, you guys are the best. It's more about, all right. So what we need to do for this next battle is I've I've sort of planned out the optimal situation in which we yeah. attack. <laughs> Um, it could also I, be that like, makes a lot of sense. Figured, like you know, oh, you know, when you're wading into combat, Emric, you could just if you alter your strike to be more like, just like this, and even <laughs> she's, giving she's us all, like, to do that. And... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah like, honestly, looks... go with whatever you feels right for your character. She'll, like she'll I'm never going to tell yeah. someone how to play their character. Good call, um, Wiltix. Tell me, th- what, what are you doing with your Blood Hunter? Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm thinking about taking the uh, feet tough. So, uh, yes. make myself a little bit stronger. I uh, have uh, tried to toughen my, myself up through battle and through training and everything like that. And uh, just with the nature of the magic that I use, I normally have to take a few 
cuts, hits, and whatnot. So uh, the more health I have, the better. So yeah, I mean your hit point maximum increases by two additional hit points every time you level up, which plus is I pretty get good. Twice my yeah. levels now as well, don't I? Yeah. Yep. Right. Exactly right. Perfect. So I get an extra eight HP. Look, it's not now. a bad little idea for you. And then it's yeah. good for me um, because it means I can actually have someone up front with me that's a little tankier. Mm. Well, um, it makes a lot of sense I, with you I, as well going rogue. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm kind of happy being the one, especially when I'm uh, in wolf form, I'm happy to be uh, yeah. the guy a up bit front. So, well, me and you up front, we've got a nice little tandem like of tankiness healing because I, mm. I can bump my uh, armor class up to 19 and heal myself up and I'm already pretty tanky. Then if you're doing that as well, you, you'll be a little bit of a tank as well. Because what's your armor class, like 17? Uh, 17 when I'm not a wolf, yes. Yeah. So 18 uh, when I am. Azura, are mm. you actually a little more tankier now that you got the I am, yeah, so 16. Oh, well, so much better, better than 14. Yeah. 14 <laughs> is real dicey. Yeah, Leosin's on 17. Yeah, now that's a good little spread. Like, we're not... No one's, like, is absurdly tanky like Ulrich in my other campaign I play. <laughs> um... Yeah, alrighty. I think you guys are really well, really well set up. So you guys spend the evening taking a long rest. Um, it is sort of late afternoon by the time you guys get out of the cave, so it is evening by the time you arrive back at your camp. You take a long rest, you sleep, recover, recuperate, and you learn from your experiences. And you all awaken the next morning, having not assigned a watch. Uh, you're lucky that nothing happens. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I rolled. Oh. You guys are so lucky. The only thing that happened was some like minor encounters during the night that are more like flavor stuff. But you guys weren't awake, so you didn't you didn't experience it. So like the shooting star mirror or stuff like that. Um, well, fuck, you guys wake up the next that. morning. Yeah, you guys wake up the next morning feeling refreshed, feeling ready to face the day. What would you guys like to do? Uh, <sighs> um, <sighs> so is our is our plan to. Uh mark this spot somehow i mean i suppose we know we can find it again i mean like we definitely know where we are because there's a camp set up right here so should we uh hide the eggs in the ground they're oh, already in the ground i assume that we've um i would have used my uh my lovely survival or nature abilities to uh cover and make the ground look like it hasn't really been disturbed so do you want to make me a um do you want to make me a, a survival check just to really disguise it as best you can hey uh <laughs> Five. Um, I'd say that I'd say that you're getting help from others if you did want to re-roll that. Yeah, I would. Because like uh, all of you said that you were digging this as well. So I'm I mean, like, I, feel like, I feel like I feel like is. Uh, oh! <laughs> um, oh, you put sad. like a stick on it to mark the spot so you don't forget it. You're like perfect. No one's gonna know what this stick sticking out of the ground means. Well, <laughs> well, I think it was, you could put a uh, a. Uh, a little sign like we've buried a teammate or something. But, well, yeah, yeah, just put a little cross, make that stick into a cross, and then it will be a grave, and no one will disturb that unless they're necromancers. Mm. Maybe I oh, can just. Oh, there's a, a lot of necromancers in the woods. <laughs> now I have three <laughs> necro dragons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Rise, Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What would you Wait, guys like uh, to do? Will Tix. Mm-hmm. What are you? What are you trying to do exactly? Oh, I don't want someone to come back past and uh, see where we buried these eggs. But I, uh, I look at him with a very, like, a bit of a dumbfounded look. I'm like, mate, and this from anybody, you know that, right? Say that again. <laughs> like, you know that you're not hiding this from anybody, right? Like, anyone could see this. From the angle I'm looking at, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Maybe for in your you, mind, Wiltix, you're like, oh, big job, big me, jobs. Right? Just sort of look, uh, look up. They don't look down. Tall uh, guys, <laughs> the big jobs. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think so. I'm convinced this is very well hidden. Well, look, look, I don't know if I can like meddle with that. This is already rolled. I don't know how it works. But unless you're say... coming over the top of it, <laughs> unless you, uh, the cart's not here, is it? We can't put the cart over the no. top. Cart over the top. What do I do though? As Doesn't they know. say, bear in our way, she'll be right. I just get more leaves. She'll be right, chuck, mate. I took more right. leaf. I took more leaf litter and stuff over it, so it doesn't look like it's actually been dug up recently. 
Yeah. Because the the main factor that people take into account is probably the fact that like it's newly dug ground. But in a forest, there's probably a lot of leaf litter on the ground. So I'll get a bunch of leaf litter and put it over it so it's literally hidden the disturbed earth. Cool. I'll uh, I'll take that into consideration. Okay, that's good. It's been taken into consideration. The <laughs> <laughs> little it's a fail safe. <laughs> Uh, alrighty. Now, did you guys want to head back to the cave? Did you want to head back to Green Nest? Or did you want to go somewhere else entirely? Uh, I think if we were heading back to Green Nest, we wouldn't have uh, buried the eggs, I suppose. Yeah, no, so I think we're going back, into, back the into the cabin. Cave. I think we're going back into the cave. Just for yeah. a quick look see. Quick look see. The to save the thing Alrighty. or relics. Yeah. In the, in the interests of expediency, um, you pass through the the camp once again with no problem at all <laughs> and you find yourself the hunters still there chilling out uh the hunters uh so this time when you walk through let me just quickly roll uh no there's only one hunter there as you guys enter back in um who's just by himself sitting there is um, it the halfling? this is the human who you spoke to nah it's the human who you spoke to the first time um he, again okay. he sort of clocks you guys you go back in just gives you a nod doesn't say anything unless you guys interact with him. Nah. Mm-mm. I will say to him though as we pass through, um Where's your companions, friend? Where have they been out and about, hey? How are you guys traveling in the uh, deck of the woods? They're out hunting. Uh, we are low on supplies and uh, no one has come out to claim food from the cave, so we assume that they must be requiring their breakfast soon. Oh hundred percent. Do you, um well look, get all that food sorted. And then we'll uh, we'll log into the cave for him. How does that sound? That's uh, very kind of you, sir. Oh, well, that's what us cultists do for each other. <coughs> uh, you you do know I'm not part of the, the order. Just yeah, I'm very I'm very aware you're not. I know what your role right. is. You you keep okay. the supply chains up and running for us all. You're the backbone, yeah. you guys. You know that. Uh, th- thank you. I give him a thumbs up and a wink and I walk off. <laughs> uh, th- th- thank you, stranger. <laughs> I walk into through. the cave. Yeah. Just so right. that you, not as suspicious. You guys are back on the map. Um, Definitely not suspicious. Being nice it, to him it hasn't made him suspicious at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's made me suspicious. What's going on? <laughs> all right. So down, down Yeah, the I'm going to leave. I like the to his feast. I'm not going to check in. I'm sure he's slurping and sees. Well, they're not rotten yet. Oh, we're not going down there. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 we're not. No, no, no. No, no, no. We will, we will leave him be with his no, no. Uh, bare, his booty. So should we head down through this way or um, go down here? I reckon we go down this way because if we go down this way, then we might actually run into him again. Look, he was an awesome bloke, but everything is still rotting, and he might not be eating right now, so might just leave him be. Could he reach us? What was his reach, Owen? Did you say 120 feet? 50 feet. 50 feet. 50 feet. Oh, oh. oh, I was like, jeepers. Okay. So 120 is going to get us from here. <laughs> he can, yeah, he can reach like, back, he can, like, he can reach back through yeah. time and pull you through. <laughs> uh, oh, it's Cthulhu! It's Cthulhu! Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> See, we might um, leave that be, and we'll just go down this way. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty, so yeah, as you approach this area here, you can see there's a 15 foot drop on the edge of this um, drop off here. So yeah, as you pass through into the caverns, there's a series of steps round towards the right that head down towards the lower section here. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Uh, can we do a perception check further ahead? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like dancing lights. <laughs> yeah, make me a perception check and I will put down. 21. 21. Um, nice. 21. You see some stuff. Uh, let me just quickly zoom back to where we are. And I'm just wondering why the music is so quiet. Um, this one seems to be very quiet. Let's flick to a different song. Sorry, bear with me. All good. Okay. YouTube people, this isn't going to make any sense because the music will be perfect the whole way through because I add it in later. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, no, I go back and remix everything afterwards because uh, I hate myself. Um, so yeah, you can see that there are um, 
right broad steps roughly hewn into the natural stone ramp, and the cavern below is carpeted with a profusion of fungi, ranging from a few inches high to nearly as tall as an adult human. You think that Wiltix passing through this area is going to have a bit of trouble uh, at certain points. Um, it seems to be there are a couple of paths heading forwards, one towards the right, one towards the left. Um, in this cavern, sort of separated by the main areas of the fungus. I'll just quickly mark them off. For Wait, did you say that will fix that trouble? Yeah, because it's only three feet high, and some of these uh, fungi are like... Just a bit above three and a half feet, thank you very much. Excuse me. Sorry, will fix is three and a half feet high. Some of these fungus are as tall as an adult human, so like five <laughs> and a half feet. Uh-huh. I'm going to turn um, around to Emmerich and go, hey, uh, Emmerich, mate, I think I might get a better view if Do I... Do you want to uh, go on the show? Yeah, yeah, I think I might be able to see better. I'll, I'll be All right, to... Andrew, come um, on, you little scallywag, jump on. Uh, I will also add, you see Azua, um, the steps themselves, there's a series of grooves worn into the steps. Um, so along the the top half, it looks like there are grooves built in that line up as they go down, almost like something has slid down these steps once or twice before. Um and along the right-hand pathway, there's a number of very bright, iridescent purple fungi that really stand out to you. To the left, they're more sort of red cap, brown, white mushrooms. But to the right, there are these very, very vivid purple mushrooms. They're quite pretty. Mm. Very sort of rich so when you say, when you say grooves in the stairs, are they mm. along the tread? Or are they going uh, yes. in the direction? So, no, sorry, they're heading, they're heading down. So from you guys here, so I'll draw them on. So it's um, like so someone it's almost... dragged something down it possibly so like this series of grooves oh, okay heading down like that so almost as if something has slid down these steps like our good mates in the uh, back cabin maybe yeah maybe yeah he uh, used to own these caves remember uh, maybe he's yeah. um went and checked out the rest of his uh... oh and could I do oh sorry oh, no, I was just gonna check just you go Andrew sorry you go, Andrew. Oh, sorry. sorry, Jared. Can I just do a nature check to see if I know what these mushrooms are? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Are, are, they, are some of them poisonous, and that's why they're yeah, like yeah. bright. Make me cold. a nature check, and we'll, I'll talk you through the fungi. Uh, ten. Ten's average. So looking through, there's a couple of species that you recognize. There's a couple of um, just the classic white cap mushrooms, the white cup. A um, couple of brown puffballs. Apart from that, not ones that you recognize. Um the really, really big ones, the sort of white and red um, massive mushrooms uh, you've never seen before. These are bizarre. Can we get through this space without touching them? Uh, the pathway leads through. It's going to be difficult, but it is possible. That's, that's the two pathways I've marked are areas where the fungi haven't seemed to have grown too much. It looks like there's been passageway through these areas. I, uh, I just turned to the group and I'm like, okay, I think we need to be careful about what we touch in this area. Uh, Do you want you stick to, to the to... paths. Just Do you want me to just uh, flame flame them? I could just destroy them from here. But that's probably a great idea, but surely that will alert whoever is in the, uh, the bottom of these caves. I could destroy them too. Hey, for the smoke to be poisonous as well. If the, uh... I mean, you could freeze them. Could freeze them? Yes. Then that way the spores don't uh, Bread? blow into yes. the air. We could do that. We can wrap ourselves in blankets and just walk through. Call the that. blankets are the answer to everything. Always take a towel. Like I said, I there's can... multiple ways we could do this. So <laughs> just don't touch the mushrooms. I'm scared if we burn them all, then they might actually send the spores up into the. That's what I'm thinking That's as well. Just... Like a... They might, but they all also might destroy. The flames might destroy the spores as well. Like it's really hard to say what could happen. I could do a combination that is my specialty. I can get high up the fumes. <laughs> I'll frost. I'll frost the bite them first, and then firebolt them. Uh, oh, 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 we could just walk through. Back. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <they could> just... <laughs> <laughs> I want to destroy everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I changed my alignment when I, when I leveled up as well. Sorry. Oh, okay. So chaotic evil. <laughs> chaotic evil. <laughs> no. Are you kind of good now? No, no, neutral good. Neutral good. What were you before? I'm always She's kidding. Neutral. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She was joking. Oh, okay. You, went, you didn't change it. Sorry. Uh, no, yeah. Good. I can sneak through. Shall we sneak through? 
Schnicky schnick. Yeah. Alright, right, what would that be? A stealth check? Stealth check, yeah. Or an acrobatics? Uh, just a stealth. 17. Would I be rolling if I'm uh, sitting on Emric's shoulders? <laughs> or would I be uh, you can Emmerich you can give Emric advantage because you're going to point out areas that Emric should be avoiding. So I would say yeah. that you can help Emric be stealthy. Hell yeah! All right, make me proud, cool. Emric. Let's do it. Zero, oh. two. Oh, no. Oh god! <laughs> well, well, well. Um, thank God for advantage. And, and I'll do uh, I'll do Leosin, who now has a plus eight to stealth. Oh my god! Well, well, well. Eighteen for Leosin. Uh, cool. Can I have a marching order? What are you guys gonna? Which order are you walking in, and where are you oh, going? I think me and Wiltix a bit at the back. Yeah. Okay. I guess yeah. the order we rolled, like Azure. Yeah. I'll do yeah. Okay. Azure up front. Yeah. Emric at the back. And then Leosin will bring up the rear as more of a... All right, uh, Azua, could I have you please roll me as you step onto the steps here? Could I have you please please roll me a D8? Mira, you're the same. Please roll me a D8. Okay. Emric, go ahead and roll me a D8. Uh, oh, Azua, no, yeah, you step down to here. So I would have been there first. Cool. Azua, you step down to here. Mira, as you step onto the steps, there's a click. Oh. And the steps drop into a slide. Can you please make me <laughs> a dexterity saving throw? Uh oh. <laughs> I love these. <laughs> oh, it's a three. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a natural three, it's one, a natural one. <laughs> um, as you as you barrel down towards this slippery slide towards Azua. Azua, could you please make your uh, dexterity saving throw as Mira f- uh, <laughs> rockets towards you at high speed? Twenty one. You just jump over the top of her <laughs> as she flings down onto oh, the pathway here and dude. skids to a halt on I'm its tail. I'm going to slide it. I'm going to, as I get down, I am going to cast Frostbite over the things that I slide into. Okay, because as you do so, uh, okay. you trigger some fungi. So I'm going to yep. flick you into initiative, but you, I'll have a con save. I'll do a con save for this thing first, because you did say that you're doing it first. So as you sort of fling into the fungus, you're like, ah, oh, Frostbite, 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 Frostbite. Oh my god. That's a seven. That's a fail. That's oh two that ones in a row. Oh, did I just get one natural one for initiative? Gotcha. You did, yeah. yeah. Oh. Alright, so that's... Three cold damage and disadvantage on the next attack. Which is just as well, because as you hit this thing, it gets a surprise attack against you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, that's what triggers the initiative, so it makes there two is not rotting good, touches very bad day. <laughs> So it's got oh, disadvantage. No. Does a 15 hit you? Uh, yes. Does. You take one necrotic damage, and then as it hits, goes to hit you again, uh, that's a ten. Uh, ten doesn't hit, does it? Mira? Claire? I don't think a ten hits. You. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh, can't you All hit right. me? Oh no. No, we can now. We can now. Oh, okay. um, which is lucky because the other roll that I rolled for the ten was a natural twenty. So you're only going to take. You take nothing from this because the ten doesn't hit. Lucky oh, you did that disadvantage God. with the frostbite. Yeah. Um, Alrighty, and we're in initiative, so let's quickly re let's quickly organize I'll get rid of the guard Drake. Is everyone's initiative correct? Yep. Uh, no, I haven't rolled yet. Alright, make sure you roll. <laughs> and let's flick on some Batale musics. Uh what am I feeling like? What are you oh, look, feeling let's play, like? Let's Owen? let's play my let's play my song. Oi! Hey! This song that's playing now um, is entitled Unto the Breach. Oh, it's got a bit of power to it. It's got a bit of power, baby. Um, so Azura is first off the bat. So Azura, as you nimbly leap over Mira and land lightly on these steps and slide to a halt just next to her here, um, you see these fungus, these this central purple body with these tentacles seems to rise up out of the ground and starts whipping away at her. And as it touches her, um, it saps some life force from her. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to leapfrog over Mira one hand mm-hmm. with one hand and make a quarterstaff attack with the Absolutely. other. Yeah, go. 21 21's going to hit. Is that a two-handed yeah. attack? That's a two-handed attack. As you crack down, this fungus goes and squeezes out, and bits of it go everywhere. Oh my god, um, we just 
Do we break the mold? Yeah, oh my god. Do it, oh, you? Uh, <laughs> with the first strike? Oh, is that what Take. you meant? I thought you were breaking the were mold. Were you going for it? Were you going for it? Fungus pun? Hey, look, I thought the fungus pun on... was brilliant. There's, <laughs> two so things on... There's two things filmed back there. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you uh, inspiration for that and tell you to fuck off. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> Alright, see you guys. <laughs> Get back here. Azua, what's your next attack if you want uh, to do a bonus action? Uh, the the uh, underarm, underarm oh, strike, yeah. which will unarmed probably strike. miss. So, um, just for Seven a bit misses. of clarity there, Owen, as those two slid down, I hadn't I hadn't slept on the things yet because I was mm -hmm. actually putting little ticks on my shoulders as they. Yeah, gotcha. So yeah, you see that you hear this click, and then the steps just turn into a slide. And Mira goes ah! <laughs> straight down. I just sort of um, go under my breath. Fuck. <laughs> the steps are still a slide at this point. Oh, perfect. Um, anything else on your turn, Azua? Uh, that's everything. Emmerich, it's your turn. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> fuck it. Let's do it. Okay. I bring out my halberd, <laughs> and then I look at Wiltix and I go, "Oh, you gotta live once in a while, don't you, friend?" And then I go down the slide as I'm, if I'm like surfing, like legless down that that pave, like that <laughs> those stairs, um, using the uh, shield. That sounds. Uh, uh, that sounds very. Uh, Huh? Sounds very acrobatic. What's on your shoulders? Yep, you are. <laughs> oh, look, don't get me wrong. I, 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 this is not a good thing for Emmerich to be doing, but I couldn't resist it. So I'm going to have the halberd like, ready to swing in as yep. I'm catapulting my way down. So I'm Fantastic. The acrobatics would fit. This is definitely going to be acrobatics. Nine. <laughs> okay. As you go to you know, slide... I'll live, with it. I'll live with the nine. As you go to slide, the weight of Wiltix on your back oh, no, throws I, off your center of gravity I hadn't put him on my shoulders off? yet oh okay. okay that's why that's why when so, I looked at him I winked at him mm. and said oh you're gonna live once in a while and then I went down because ah. I was about to put him on alrighty as you as you go to uh, head on down the weight of your halberd out throws off your center of gravity as you're holding it out ready to swing uh, <laughs> because it's a heavy weapon would you like to make me a dexterity saving throw alright let's do it <laughs> I knew this was not going to be good from the get go 13's okay. That's okay. Um, uh, oh no, it's... Uh, it's 14 uh, minus 14. one. <laughs> yeah, the, you needed a 14. Uh, oh. So you go barreling down towards these two um, <laughs> and crash into the back of Azura and Mira. Uh, that's all that happens though. All right. It would so be I'd worse if I rolled can, worse, hey? Yeah. You can absolutely... Yeah, it's, it's only minor consequences because you're only one off the DC. Uh, you stand up. That's all your movement gone. Uh, that's fine. Would you like to make an attack? I will, because they have reach. So it works yeah. out well. <laughs> so I sort of um, get up and I start looking around. I've got a little bit of um, M2. I'm like, oh, sorry, guys. I tried to be really cool, but it didn't really work out the way I planned. And then I bring out the helmet. I'm like, I just sort of, like, just I just get up and I'm just sort of still seeing stars a little bit. And then I just mm -hmm. make a random erratic strike. Yep. So let's do it. Let's see it. I don't think a nine, nine will hits. hit, Owen. Nine hits. How do you want to kill it? It Nine hits. Nine oh hits. Oh my god, it is a mushroom, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's it's, a, it's an immobile of, mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> As I slide down and I like mm. stand up, I crash into him a little bit. But like, thank god that the DC, the, the roll itself wasn't too bad. Um, and then I guess sort of like in the whole motion of things, I'm going to say that as I've crashed into them, the momentum's carried my helmet into the mushroom and I've accidentally yep. killed it. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. So, like, just that whole motion and momentum of things yeah. happened. I'm not even going to make it like a, a strike that Emmerich's done himself. It's just sort of, that's how the whole thing has turned out. It just out. happens, yeah. Uh, alrighty, well, anything on your bonus action? Uh, a bonus. I can't do another attack because I destroyed that one. Alrighty. This one is going to move here, which I believe that will trigger does my opportunity trigger. Attack. Yeah, but it's it's going to have a little bit of extra AC because Azua is in the way. But feel That's free to fine. make a roll. Does an eleven hit? Yep, <laughs> even with the extra <laughs> AC. I thought wow. it would. It's five. Yeah. It's five slashing. So it's all right. I roll two plus three. Yep. Uh, it's going to make a multi attack against Azua. 
Uh, here we go. I mean, like, I don't need to say it. It can't move anymore, though. Its movement is zero now. No. Nope. Uh, that's a four a and a star. five. What was I'm that? guessing a four doesn't hit you, Azua. It does not. And I'm guessing a five doesn't hit you. <sighs> it does not. <laughs> it's Leosin's turn. He moves up and goes, uh, Brother, uh, do you need a hand? Or are you okay? Look, any, uh, any help is greatly appreciated. Yep. And he throws a dart. Oh, I was going to say, he should try and come down here like I did. Seven. Wow, it's almost dead. Uh, <laughs> next up, that's <laughs> Leosin's turn. Uh, oh, next up, uh, all right. So as these, as we reach their turn, I'll move these guys onto the layer so that you can see them. Emerging from between the other mushrooms are more of these purple fungus, these violet fungus, and they move up. Five, 10, 15. This one's going to move up. I'm just going to move it. I'm prone as well, aren't I? You are currently prone. Yeah. Cool. Um, one is going to make two attacks against Azur. One's going to make two attacks against Mira. Oh, there's three. Sorry. So I'll roll a d4 to see which one. Oh, no, Mira. Okay. So we'll do you <laughs> first. Does a 15 hit you? Yep. You take five necrotic damage. Oh, that one. Does a 13 hit you? Nope. You take nothing. Hey. Nice. Does a nine hit you? Nope. Alrighty, and uh, does does a fourteen hit you? No. Ooh. Alrighty, and now for Azua. A tanky does a natural sorcerer. does a natural twenty hit you, Azua? Oh, <laughs> you take you take you take but nine necrotic damage. I have um resistance to necrotic damage. Though. You do, so hey, you only take uh, nice four, and then a natural one doesn't hit you. I rolled I rolled with it with advantage um on against uh, Mira. I really struggled to roll above a 15. I rolled a natural 20 and then a natural one for Azul, one after the other. Jeez. Amazing. I love so it. So I ro- was um, it 4 damage or 5 damage? 4 damage, because the 9 halved um, yep. is 4.5 and then you always round down for D&D. Cool. Uh, that's all the Violet Fungus. Wiltix. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, I don't think I need to crowd the space any further, even though the side looks really fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to actually go down over to the corner here of this ledge. And yep. uh, I'll just have a shot with the crossbow at, I suppose, the one that's straight in front of me. Absolutely. So, I, that think, one, uh, I don't think there's any way you can't four. kill this. Yeah, how would yeah. you like to kill it? I was going to say, um, well... Just pin it to the wall. Very just hit it right in the middle and just grab its chest and then fall backwards. But, uh, yeah. You just All press right, through. Good. Yeah, as, as you slice through the top of this fungus... Um, the cap just falls off and the tentacles immediately freeze in place and then drop limp to the ground as the stalk bends over. Anything else in your turn, Wiltix? <laughs> uh, I would love to pretend to distract them with a fake little fire. Uh, with my <laughs> minor illusion, just in the middle of the room on some of the other... Uh... Yeah, so you, you create a little bit of fire. Um, I'll allow this as a bonus action because it's funny. Um, you create oh, a bit of fire. A bonus action anyway, isn't it minor illusion? No, nah, it's... it's an action. In action. Oh, is it? I know, I know, but oh. I'm, I'm allowing it because it's funny. Um, you create a minor illusion of some fire right here, uh, just to the north of them. They don't have eyes, so they can't see it. Um, so nothing happens. <laughs> That's why you allowed it because you know they're, they're fungus. <laughs> oh, I've, I've allowed oh. cantrips like minor illusion and prestidigitation as bonus actions before. Um, for, for flavor stuff, I generally do allow it because it's pretty funny. Like Azure using the light cantrip as a bonus action for his like ultra cool punches I'm always a fan of so I, I generally allow those as well Love it. Um, Mira you're up would you like to stand up yes <laughs> uh, half your movement to stand up you've got 15 feet of movement left if you'd like it I'm gonna be able to get away but... oh actually yeah oh, oh, oh no disengage there's only two left yeah, I just if I if I move away and have to disengage or provoke an opportunity attack, and I would get an action if I just I reckon... disengage. So I will. Yes. Sorry. No, no, it's alright. Your turn. I'll let you uh, actually do it. I won't say anything. Um, you know what? I have a um dagger. You know, and you know what? I'm gonna use that dagger. Oh yeah. shit! Is it the yep. first time Mira's been in close combat? Yeah. Yeah, it is. This is. <laughs> this is the first time Mira's been hit. Mm. Um taken any sort of damage so too close too close to the mushrooms so i will dagger dagger oh you've taken damage before now oh 23 to hit 
That hits three piercing damage. Three piercing damage. As you strike out with this dagger, you sort of you fumble as you get it out of your pouch, but feeling the grip and the weight of this knife, you thrust forward desperately, carving into the stalk, dealing a little bit of damage. Hey. No yep. I do. Anything else in your turn, Mira? I will move over here to up against the wall, so I'm still within so that, range, but out of the way. So of it will the trigger an opportunity attack from this hit. one. Hmm? It is going to trigger an opportunity of attack from this one, just so you know. Oh dear. Oh no. <laughs> Would you still like whole, to move? No, no. <laughs> that was the whole point okay. of not doing that. <laughs> Alrighty, Azua. You've got one here, one in front of Mira. Awesome. Uh, I'll make a quarter star attack again. Mira. Start. Mira. What you going to do, <laughs> Mira? Uh, that is uh, 22 to hit. Oh my and, god, uh, he's hitting. Oh, he's breaking yeah. the mold. My gosh. Uh, out of the mold and into the fire. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> So There's your episode on. And, then, uh, <laughs> and then jump up with a, uh, an unarmed kick. He's hitting them all! Oh, That's wow. Big machine! That level it, up! As you, as you basically pound this thing to dust in front of you, it looks so hurt. It is, it is so close to death. There's almost just like one tentacle limply tries to slap at you. Um, anything else in your turn, Azua? Uh, that's everything. You can spend a key point if you'd like. Just save uh, I'm going to save them. Just save them? Fair enough. Yeah. Emmerich, fair. you're up. All right. Very fair. Uh, what's so you've got currently... this one here is almost gone. This one in front of Mira is looking... Uh, it's taken one dagger strike from Mira. All right. I'm going to hit this one with my helmeted. Helmet. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. I don't think oh, this will one. hit. So a That's natural a one will That's always one miss. plus five. Yeah. So a natural one will always miss. So yeah, as you, as you fling over the top, it does miss. Okay. Um, okay, that's a little bit problematic. Well, anyway, regardless, I will. I'm going to hit this one actually then with my my yep. um, the butt of the helmet. So as I sort of um, come over Mira and sort of try and uh, stab at the the mushroom, sort of Mira being in front of me, sort of throwing me off my my balance, my step, and also just coming down yeah. the slide. I'm still a bit disoriented. Um, Absolutely. So I'll miss that one, and then I'll then try and recover, and then. As I sort of miss with that one, I'll then send another strike with the butt of the, bla- uh, the halberd onto this one. Let's give yeah. that a let's give that a shot. Uh, I think eight will miss. <laughs> eight hits. How do you want to do this? Oh my oh. god! It's not nine. Even, even damage, with though. a plus two, that's with a plus two bonus to armor class, you still hit. So that's two plus three. Cover. So five damage. How do you do it? Yeah. How do you want to do okay. this? Okay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I rolled oh, yeah. so bad. Um, and that was even... I even added a plus two AC for half cover, and you still hit it. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, as as I bring down my uh, butt of the halberd onto the top of the mushroom, it sort of starts... It just sort of crumbles into... A, yeah, uh, it's just mushed yeah. into paste. It's like Pretty a modern pestle. You just crumble this thing apart as the tentacles writhe in pain and then fall still. Yeah, we'll do that. Perfect. Um, and then I'm actually yeah. going to move here, just so yep. I can sort of walk wall. some attacks as well. And I'll just sort of, well, I'll, get, I'll try and taunt it. I don't think it will understand me, but like, come on, you little piece then. of shit. Huh? What, you, um, you saw what I just said? Oh, I'm going to make you just sh- sue me or something, or whatever that is. The the fungus doesn't have any ears, so I know. it can't hear you. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to stand on um, feet as the well. the funguses go, except it's not this funguses go because this fungus is dead. <laughs> it's Leosin's go. <laughs> oh, uh, first Leosin, <laughs> Yeah, Leosin seeing that uh, Mira's looking a bit sort of scared and a bit worried is actually going to come down and help you out, Mira. He's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. He's going to try and run to here. Does he go down the here, slide sorry? and slide? He does, yeah. I'm going to make a deck save oh, for him. Yes, yeah, he's going to do so much better than me, probably. Yeah, it's better. 13. Only a little bit. It's still 14 is what he needed. Oh, sorry. I should No, sorry. I should have made a dex save. should have been an acrobatics check first. So I will make the acrobatics check. 10. He, so he did need the dex save. Um, but the wow. dex save is less bad. So yeah, he, he sort of stumbles a bit, but manages to get into position. Um, he is going to use his quarter stuff. Uh, oh, sorry. That should have displayed in... Let me try that again. There you go. 12 hits. 8 damage, two-handed. And then he's going to do... An unarmed strike. I'm gonna punch it. Twenty-four. 
it has seven hit points. That's exactly lethal. Oh my god! As nice. as Leosin sort of rushes past you, Mira, he's like, I I, I can I can help Mira. Uh, hold still. And then he swings his quarter staff down, smashes into it, and then he sees Leosin. Um, sorry, he sees how Azua's been doing this. He goes, Ah, oh, the the one two. Okay, yep, yep, yep. And then he comes up with a punch and clocks it right in the center of the stalk, which just caves it apart. Nice. And you guys are out of initiative. Very nice. Hey. Sorry for that slip up there. My mistake. So. I'll tell you what, though. That uh, that slide was a good bit of fun. Wiltix, why don't you use the slide and come on down into our big uh, Emrick's arms, hey? Wiltix, come on down. <laughs> I'll uh, take a nice little run up and jump and slide down the slide. <laughs> Make me an acrobatics check. Everyone did it. <laughs> There's a ledge right there. Oh, no. so, would you like to make me a dexterity saving throw, please? Uh, so I will. Can I give him a dex? Can I, I give him help yeah. on the, the dex saving throw? Because I'm there to catch him. Yeah, I, I'll say so. 13. The acrobatics, the acrobatics check that I can't help you with. No. Yeah. 22. 22. <laughs> so as you as you sort of spin around Wiltix, you angle your body towards Emmerich and he reaches out and just catches you as you sort of head towards the bottom. And then I uh, sling him into the momentum. fields of mushrooms. <laughs> no, I do don't do that. I don't do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn, I'm not that mean. Uh, um, Could you, you imagine catch that? Him and you... Yeah, I can. Um, in the cat, is... though, I immediately just put him on my shoulders. I'm like, all right, let's uh, move on to this cabin, eh? So one of, one of Alice's... Um, one of my favorite moments of her playing so alice is my partner um she pushed another player into a field that was clearly like inhabited by a witch oh my God. Uh, that had cast oh, that like was a, amazing. A, some sort of illusion and he he's a very he's a very passionate player and he takes it very seriously and she doesn't take it seriously and she was like oh can i just push him in and he was like <laughs> oh, i want to stop this and he rolled a natural one <laughs> it was the best thing ever oh. so good uh, except um, your fate <laughs> yeah, basically. And then he ended up in a house with a witch that was trying to get him to eat eyeballs. It was amazing. Oh, um, God. <laughs> of fun. You guys did really well. The the trap stairs got every single one of you. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think I think that's a good place for us to us to finish up. Oh, it probably is. Because yeah. yeah. we are, yeah, we've we've hit the hit the one and a half hour mark from our break, um, which is a three hour total. I think um, I think that's enough for for one night and uh, that'll give us lots of stuff to do next session as well so i'd like to thank you so much for joining us live i can see that we've had a few people coming in and out so thank you for joining us live if you're watching this playback on twitch um thank you for supporting us on twitch where we're really starting to get into the live stream as you can see with the uh the twitch overlay and things like that i'm hoping i can bully these people into joining me on camera next time um <laughs> comment yeah, comment below Comment, uh, comment below on the uh, on the Twitch stream, or if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below on YouTube as well to encourage them. Um, they have beautiful faces. Let's all let's all look at them. Um, if you're a podcast listener, you don't care, so carry on as as you are. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will be doing another Subnautica live stream. Uh, Emmerich and I will be doing another Subnautica li- Subnautica live Jared, stream coming up Jared. soon. <laughs> Emmerich, <Jared>. Emmerich. <laughs> do you know what i don't care you're Emmerich now no you're Emmerich now uh jared and i will be doing another thank you jared and i will be oh, doing another subnautica live stream as Emmerich? that would be pretty funny actually <laughs> that'd be pretty was, funny actually. i was like i was in my like seed moth and i was yeah. hunting down owen and like running in, like running into him oh my god him. yeah he um we didn't oh, know whether yeah, or not you could hurt, hurt other players <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> there was one bit where I'm, I'm swimming through a cave and he's he's literally coming on headlights full full blast behind me and i can just see my shadow getting bigger on the wall behind me and then as he slams into me i get down to 10 health it was this it was terrifying um, that was so good that was good we found out we found out that you can indeed hurt your uh, your other players with the with the it's all uh, right. submersibles Worst case is um, he just pops back up at the uh the respawn point and he's good yeah uh, so we'll be doing that probably Sunday. We'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. I know the Twitch stream says that we're going to do it on Sunday, but we might not. Depends on how we're traveling. Um, and apart from that, yeah, we we may or may not be live tomorrow night. We Our, our regular session that I do on a Wednesday night with, uh, with some of these guys and some other people, we haven't live streamed yet. I've been trying to convince them that we should start live streaming it. So we may be live tomorrow night with some more D&D in a, in a completely homebrew campaign, a completely homebrew setting. We'll see how they go. Last off, they were fighting, or, or well, they were interacting with a, a young black dragon. So, um, lots cool. of fun there in a dungeon. It was actually Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, unlike, oh, actually, no, this was Dungeons and Dragons as well today. We did, we had Dungeons and Dragons today. There's dragon hatchlings. Dragon eggs. Yeah, we, we did some Dungeons and Dragons. 
but yeah, thank you so much. If, if you're enjoying this, um, please share it with your friends, uh, like and subscribe. If you're not enjoying this, Tell me why, so I can make it better. Honestly, they might like it. You can still share it with your friends. Yeah. Uh, no, seriously. If you've got any, if you've got any feedback for us, if you want to chat to us, um, I'm on Twitter, monitoring our social media stuff all the time. On Facebook as well. Feel free to hit us up for a message. Um, I'm going to set up a little Discord as well in the future if you guys want to be part of that. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We will bid you adieu, and we will see you for episode ten. And I think we'll have to do something pretty special with episode ten because. Cool. Um, 10 episodes is, is a that's lot of fun. Awesome. That's um, that is a bit of fun. That's though. great. Go on quickly. That's wow. 30 hours of Dungeons & Dragons that you can enjoy from the Lost Archives <laughs> Tyranny of Dragons campaign. <laughs> yeah, really? Oh, fuck. Wow, hey. It's almost a full work week of Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll see you again for episode 10. Take care, guys. Right. Take care, guys. Goodbye. Stay safe. Bye, uh...